So you're at a crossroads of trying to figure out whether to stick with the W-2 salary job or go full 1099 commission-based income. What do you do? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down both the reality as well as the risk of both options. That way you can figure out which one is best for yourself. My name is Tyler Royke. I help people build income and wealth in real estate, and I run an international real estate team at eXp Realty. If you get any value whatsoever out of this video, all I'd ask is that you like, comment, and hit that subscribe button so that I can continue to share more tips and resources with you in the time ahead. And with that in mind, let's dive into the video. It's commonly said that having your pay 100% based in commissions is hard. Now, what isn't said enough is how hard it is to have your pay 100% in control of somebody else. So while it is hard to not have a guaranteed salary, it's also hard to have an income that's limited by the amount of time that you can work as well as what somebody else determined that your time is worth. So the reality boils down to this. Both paths are hard and we get to choose our hard. Now let's talk about the risk because like the reality of the situation, the risk is also not lopsided. Because the risk of not having anything to show for your time and efforts when you choose the 100% commission-based path is not the only risk. There's also the risk of staying in a situation in which you have a limited potential for growth as well as opportunity to increase your earnings. As far as which of those two risks is greater, it will vary person to person. For someone who is hungry for more in their life the risk of being stuck in a system in which you're always trading your time for money when time is limited is likely to be the bigger of the two risks. And so now that you have both the reality and the risk to consider, you've got three options. Option one is to go all in on your W-2 salary job. Accept the fact that your income is going to be based by the amount of time that you can put in. So the best that you can do is to work towards increasing the value of your time. And this is where developing your skill sets is going to come into play. Look at what skills you can develop and cultivate in order to increase your earnings per hour over the course of time. And as you're receiving your regular paychecks, Take a bare minimum of 10% off the top before you do anything else with your money and pay yourself first. And don't just save that money, take it and invest it in assets for the long term. By assets, I mean real estate, stock, or even businesses potentially, but make sure that you're putting it in a place where first and foremost, it's going to be safe secure and have an opportunity to grow and build that base of assets over the course of time as you're earning the income. Because if you do this consistently, that's how you can make sure that you are building something in the background, even though your pay is based by the hour. And if possible, look for opportunities that you can work and earn overtime. And best yet, take that over time and extra bonuses if you get any throughout the year and also put that towards investing for the long term. Your future self will thank you and I mention that because if you're watching this video it's likely that you have a thought that you want something better for your life so at least if you're going to go all in on your W-2 make sure that you set a standard and are very strict with the fact that you're going to take at least 10 percent off the top and invest it and like I said better yet if you can do that with some overtime and bonuses as well and just Toss that whole thing in there if you can manage to do so. Now, the second option is to go all in on the 1099, 100% commissioned base thing that you're looking at. Accept the fact that you're going to get paid 100% based on the results. And so that all comes down to you doing whatever it takes to go out there and produce results. While in a salary W-2 position, your input is your time, in a 1099 commission-based situation, your input is more likely than not to be the conversations you're having on the front end. So that's the work you're doing. It's the connections with people, having conversations, building relationships, making connections so that you have a client base that you're building of people who know you, who like you, and who trust you, who want to ultimately move forward and do business with you. And like a W-2, where if there is any opportunity to increase your income, it's likely going to be based around the skill sets you develop and likely time on task as well with that. Here, it's going to be more so based on the skills you develop, not 
necessarily the time on task. And so look at what you can do to increase your level of skill set and to do that as quickly as you possibly can. And you're also going to want to focus on being not busy, but productive and holding yourself accountable to the hours that you're putting into your business. Because like a W-2 where you can measure the amount of inputs, the amount of time you put in, in commission-based sales, you can also measure the amount of inputs you put in meaning the amount of conversations you're having, that what you're doing on the front end to assure that you're putting in the inputs that are required to produce a result on the back end. And if you're getting the help and guidance and mentorship of someone who's experienced in the business, it shouldn't be a mystery to you in terms of what you need to do input wise to produce the desired output. And since you're watching this because you want something more in your life, I'm gonna tell you that the same rule that I mentioned in the salary position also applies here. Take a bare minimum of 10% off the top every single time you get paid and put it towards paying yourself first and investing for the long term with that money. Do that before you do anything else, before you pay for anything else, your expenses, etc. Pay yourself first because that only works if you're disciplined about it and do it 100% of the time. It doesn't work if you do it when it's convenient or when you feel like you have the extra money. That's why you gotta take it off the top and pay yourself first and then figure out how to make the other 90% work for everything else you need to take care of. And guess what? If it's not enough, what do you go out and do? Well figure out how you can produce more results to build a bigger pipeline, to have more conversations, more inputs, right? More inputs over the course of time equals more outputs. The difference between a W-2 though is it's delayed. W-2, you show up and put in the hours, you get paid in two weeks. Here, you, sh you show up and have the conversations, you, you might get paid over a much longer course of time, especially when you're starting at zero day one. There's gonna be a lag time in a lot of situations in real estate, it's often a 90 day lag time. It can be crazy like that and there's some exceptions, but you just gotta know and expect that even if you're doing everything right day one, there's gonna be some time on task that it takes to see the result of that work you're putting in on the front end. And that's why, that's part of why that the earnings potential and potential for growth is oftentimes bigger in a commission-based position. It's because you have to get through that period of time on the front end where you're not seeing the results in order to see the bigger result later. Now, there is a third option, and the third option is to keep the W-2 while simultaneously giving everything you've got to getting the 1099 going. And if you decide to go with this third option, you've gotta understand that you've got to stick with it for as long as it takes to get the 1099 going. It's not just gonna happen because you dipped your toes in or because you're interested or because you're putting time in whenever you have the time. No, you've gotta be more disciplined with it than that. Even if you're working 40 hours a week, you gotta be committed for a set of time that you're gonna work on that 1099 as if it is your job that you're getting paid for, as if if you're not accountable to yourself with that time you're putting in, that you're not gonna get paid. Because that's the reality of the situation if you don't put the time on task to develop the skills to ultimately get the results at a later time. So if you go with the third option, you've got to be committed to it. You've gotta be committed to putting in an additional 10, 20, 30, potentially 40 plus hours a week on top of that full-time salary job. And I'm giving a bunch of different times there because depending on what it is and depending on how well you manage your time, it's maybe doable with different amounts of times. For instance, real estate, I'm not gonna tell you that it requires 40 hours a week. There's agents out there who make this happen with 30, 20, even 10 hours a week. They make it happen and, and really get significant traction over a relatively short amount of time in the industry. However, it's how they spend the time that makes a difference. And so those are your three options. So hopefully that helps you navigate this crossroads you're facing as you decide how much you wanna continue to stick with that W-2 and whether or not that 1099, 100% commission based income in real estate is for you. And let me leave you with this. If you're seriously looking at real estate and getting a license and making things Things happen with it as a real estate agent, whether that's on a full-time basis, on a part-time basis to start out with, etc. If there is anything I can do to potentially help you now or in the future, 
go ahead and reach out to me. You'll find my email along with some other helpful resources for you in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, all I'd ask is that you like, comment, and hit that subscribe button so that I can continue to share more tips and resources with you on the journey ahead. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching the video. And until next time, I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.